I wrote this program, it's an RSS reader, and I wrote it in C++. And there are numerous RSS reader programs out there, right? Even in those times when I um, had made the switch from Windows to, to Linux. And so one of the programs that I had missed from um, my days using Windows uh, exclusively was um, um, a feed reader for bringing in data from different websites and showing it on the screen so that you have a quicker way to access news and information. So I wrote this program. I said, you know, how hard can it be to make a, a news reader? So um, I embarked on this journey of building this program for my private use and it was like, okay, this could be a benefit for others to um, be able to have access to this program. So eventually I discovered GitHub and I started posting the code to GitHub. Then that led to other, dis other questions in my mind. It was like, okay, um, how are other software developers, should they decide to do so, right? Not saying that they would, but should another software developer out there decide to access this, this software code and try to compile it on their machine and not, not that they would it would be impossible but it would be more difficult because the way I, I set up my tools the way I um, compile the program and link the program um, you know they may be totally different from the way they try to set up and if they try to do a setup uh, just guessing they uh, could run into various roadblocks right this is a common thing in software development and so I decided to um, write scripts that would compile the programs, right? And then later on I decided, okay, I want uh, the ability for this program to get installed on other Linux computers at some point. You know, it would be convenient and handy to be able to do that. And since I had finished the program, I said, why not? Why not explore this and figure out this process? So I decided to um, learn how to build uh, packages in Linux and I went through a process of figuring that out I read the documentation on how packages are built for uh, Red Hat based and Debian based uh, Linux operating systems so I figured that out and I, I did a lot of scripting and a lot of workarounds and I realized that I did way too much work trying to build these packages and everything that I do in the Linux environment I want it to be uh, structured, standardized, and repeatable, right? And so um, I then said, okay, I noticed something about these packages. They remind me of other things that I use in a Linux environment, uh, mainly the configure script. So I'm sitting here looking at, um, you know, the way that packages um, flow, and I was like, you know, this reminds me of auto tools. So I said, okay, if I'm going to make the packaging process go more smoothly, um, I need to learn auto tools. So I went, I studied auto tools. Then I took about a two year break because I had some other things that I, I had to uh, you know, take care of. And then I recently resumed full speed um, my study and adoption of auto tools uh, back in November of 2022. And so, um, January 14, 2023 was a major day because I, uh, I, I took um, the auto tools knowledge and I just uh, went, went right at it in all seriousness. And I spent about eight to 12 hours, eight to 12 hours putting an auto tool script together and it works, it works very well. So then that's, that led to, okay, so I got that accomplished, I can check that off. So what's the next thing? The next thing is I need to build a package, right? And so I said, I did all of this auto tool study so that I could build a package more smoothly, as well as solve other problems such as being able to build uh, C and C++ software uh, very, very smoothly and very agilely in a Linux-based environment. So, um, so I said, okay, let's, let's start down this path of uh, building a package. So from 4 p.m. on January um, 16 to about uh, 5.30 a.m. January 17, I spent close to 12 hours uh, getting the package put together. And what I'm gonna show you first is the end result of a finished 
RPM package in Fedora 37, and that's the environment that I've been using, and uh, using that to install the program on another computer, right? A computer that doesn't have all these developer tools and none of this stuff. Just let's just pretend like I'm an in I'm, I'm an end user, and I just want to uh, take a file. Maybe I downloaded it from the internet off of a off of a landing page, right, or something like that. Um, I got some uh, web page up with a link on it that says, okay, here's the file you can download. And once you download it to your computer, double click it or something like that and install the program, right? So I don't double click or anything like that in this process, but I could. But um, basically, um, I'm going to show you the program getting installed. And then once we do that, we're going to show uh, the process leading up to uh, getting the program installed. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoy uh, the description of this packaging process, and then I will wrap up at the end with some closing um, comments. This is the GNOME desktop on a second computer that I have set aside for running Linux as a regular user and not as a software developer. And so I have the RPM package downloaded um, from, a, from a USB flash drive and I copied it to the home directory and then I used DNF to install the RPM. So I decided to use DNF rather than the actual RPM uh, command. So the program is installed and then I launched the program. I used the command line option to launch the program. Um, we could have gone with a graphical option. And so this program is running and all I had was just a package for installing it, which is great. And so now that I've done that, I want to uninstall it so I can make sure that the program is properly removed from the system. And so I uh, used the up arrow in the command line window to find the DNF command that I had previously ran. And then I just make some edits to that command so that I can um, just choose DNF remove Gaucher RSS in this case, the name of the program. So I select the option to remove it and then it's gone. So overall it's a success, got the program there and installed and then removed the program. So now I'm gonna switch back to the the computer where I do the development on. And I'm gonna change the background on, on it because um, I just want something different while I do this. So I changed the background, made it look uh, a little more colorful, a little more interesting. I like these workspaces in the GNOME desktop where I can put different program screens in different, different screens. And so this is the graphical uh, environment for GNOME in in Fedora Linux. And I just want to run LibreOffice real quick um, just so that we can see that we're in a graphical environment. We're not in a command line environment. We have the option to do things graphically if we wanted to. Do things in a more user-friendly way as it were. But the process that I'm doing here of creating a package, I'm going to go with a more, much more developer centric way of doing that. Um, so here is the tar gazip file. I handcrafted this this uh, tar gazip. I had downloaded a the tarball from GitHub for this project. And when I extracted it, I noticed that it would extract out to a second directory. And that was unacceptable for this process. So I extract the contents and then I recompress the second directory right after I rename it so that when it when this tar this new tarball extracts it's going to extract out to the proper name that the rpm build tools are expecting right so i have the source code here this is all the source code and I'm at this point inspecting the um, inspecting the contents, and then I have the spec file, right? 
So the spec file is how the RPM is built. It is the instruction, the instruction manual for the RPM build process. So when you're trying to put an RPM together, this file is basically the, the sequence of events and all the details that the RPM build process needs in order to construct an RPM file, whether it be a source RPM or a binary RPM, right? If you're going to build an RPM from scratch, this is the starting point. And this file has to be done properly. The first section you see up there, build requires, right? That has all of the libraries that the program requires in order to build successfully, in order to translate from source code into executable code. You'll see above that the the source information, right? So that's all the that's all the build information that I have highlighted. And then above that is the source source code file or sorry, the compressed file that has the source code in it. And then this is a description. So if you ever did DNF info, th that's where that information comes from, where it tells you about what the, the program is. Then the, the sections I just highlighted, that's where all the actual activity happens. That's where the actual execution happens in terms of building it. I just highlighted the compressed uh, file name, right? And I dynamically construct that. So let's see what this looks like when running it in the command line. And so what I want to do is um, I want to put these windows side by side. And so I'm going to do that at some point. Um, I got the command line window where I'm going to basically destroy the RPM build environment and then recreate it. I'm going to reinstitute it, right? When I'm going through my iterations of uh, building the RPMs and testing out that process of building RPMs, I like to delete the entire environment and then reconstruct it. There's this program called RPM Dev Dash Setup Tree, and when you run that program, it creates all of the folders that you need for building an RPM. So I use that, and then I use that in conjunction with copying the tarball, we call it a tarball. I like to call it the, the tar, the targiz, or the targizip, right? The compressed, the compressed archive that has all the source code, I copy that over into the sources directory for RPM, for the RPM build directory, right? So you got this RPM, you have this this RPM build directory in your home directory, right? And so this is what the file structure, the folder structure looks like for that, um, for that particular directory, right? So, so what I like to do is um, I do all of that where I, I set up this directory structure. I use RPM dev dash setup tree and it does it for me automatically. So that's great. I love that. And then I copy over the compressed archive into the sources folder, as you can see here. So I do that in the first tab. In the second tab, this is where I actually execute RPM build dash BA. And then I pass to it the spec file. And then that's where all of this happens, right? That's where all of this happens. It ran a configure script to do all the checks and then it is then it runs make so now it's actually translating the source code into the executable and then it's doing all the other administrative tasks to specify it by the spec file and there you have a successful RPM build process you look down at the very bottom and you're looking for errors right so you, you scan up, you can scan up and down, you can see this whole process, right? And see all the steps that it took. It's, these are all, this is AutoTools, right? So AutoTools integrates neatly with RPM, 
that was my theory two years ago, two and a half years ago. That was my theory, and my theory turned out to be correct. Auto tools and RPM belong together. They 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 are um, hand in the glove. They they fit nicely. So I'm going to take this command line window. I'm going to put it on the left hand side, and then I'm going to take the file window uh, from Nautilus. Right. I'm going to take the file window. I want it on the right hand side. So I'm going to move it into the workspace, and then I'm going to have it docked to to the right. So the reason why I'm doing this is so that um, when I build the RPM, I want to also copy the RPM to the home directory. And then, so I'm going to, and I'm referring more to the binary RPM, right? You sometimes have to be specific about which RPM we're talking, what type of RPM, because you have source RPMs and you have binary RPMs. Binary RPMs are the more common ones where you're thinking about installing a program. So I would drag and drop this RPM that is built, this binary RPM, into a flash drive, right? So that was me kind of imitating me dragging it over into a flash drive. And so that is the process in a nutshell of creating a package in Fedora Linux. Fedora 37. So that's the process of taking a spec file, a spec file that describes how the software is going to be uh, built, right, into a package format. And this spec file leverages the Auto Tools configure script, right? So if you looked at my earlier videos where I was describing my journey of picking up auto tools and how it was going to serve to help me build a package and this was all just based off of my theory right i didn't see this written down anywhere um this was all my theory my theory worked so i am extremely pleased with that extremely pleased more than you could ever know that it all worked better than i expected and so everything just came together and it's lovely um, the spec file is, um, I won't say unadulterated, um, it, it, it is um, as boilerplate and as plain a spec file as I could imagine um, uh, uh, putting together, right? And, that's, and that's, the, that's the beauty of this whole process, of how you can simplify something to such a point where um, it actually represents a huge amount of complexity that results in um, the proper integration and execution of a process. So that's the, that's the uh, overall package building um, process in a nutshell. And I hope this was insightful. I hope this was of uh, value to you. And if you have any questions or insights or uh, things you want to share about this process, feel free to use the comments um, and I will uh, look forward to any comments that you have to share and I hope you find this well and I hope your endeavors in building software or understanding this process on, it, on the, outs, the outs, outside of software development where we're, where we're doing the, the, the logistics of getting the software out to end users or to other software developers um, makes your process much easier. Thank you.